glad to be here. This is one thing I really hate to do is talk in public. I hate it. Uh, I'm a writer, I'm not a speaker, so I'm having trouble getting a little paper. Uh, and I did this to keep myself organized. Uh, this is my first time being here, too, and uh, I don't know why I never came here before, but uh, it's a great place. Do you all know what my topic is? Yes. Okay. Uh, intellectual dishonesty? Yes. yes. Okay. I know this is a very polite um, uh, place, and you are <laughs> nice people, but uh, we're actually talking about what? I'll say it one time, but I won't say it again. We're talking about bullshit. <laughs> That's what we talk about. And I'm, and I'm going to start with the issue that got me really aware of it. It got me aware in a way that I wanted to respond to it. Uh, I was a teacher for a long time, 20, 24 years, university professor, and I saw it a lot and um, never talked about it because we were on a campus. So I talk about it. But I'm not on the campus anymore, I'm a journalist. So, um, at, at first, became aware of how bad intellectual dis dishonesty is when the Black Lives Matter movement started. When it started, all, I can use the word now because I used it one time already. Yeah. <laughs> all of the bullshit started. Now, does anyone in this room really think that the, the, the term Black Lives Matter is something pernicious? That it's like an evil thing that's trying to take over the world, is trying to indoctrinate people? Does anyone really believe that? No. Well, see, that's, that's the point. Most people don't really believe that. But what has happened is, it's become very convenient. It's a very convenient shorthand for some very bad things. And it works. I know places right now, we can go to the villages. We can go to the villages where all those wonderful Yankees go um, and say, Black Lives Matter, and what happens? And you know darn well, black people aren't trying to take over anything, nor are we trying to say we're better. When it first started, some young black people called me and said, uh, how does that sound, Black Lives Matter? I said, well, it sounds pretty uh, innocuous. <laughs> black Lives Matter. What the hell could be frightening about that? Well, something is. Something is, and I know what happened. What happened is someone realized that you could get a lot of knowledge out of using the expression. Do you know what it really means? What black lives really means? Black lives matter? I'll tell you what it means. It means that black lives matter adverb to. Black lives matter also. It does not mean that this is the only life that matters. And that life is superior. We don't mean that. We only meant was, please allow us to be part of the human race also. And so what you have there is a prime example of intellectual dishonesty. When you go out and you, on purpose, tell a lie or misconstrue the truth or hold back the truth for advantage. And to me, that's a very bad thing. When you tell a lie and leave out information for your advantage. And every time you, you uh, uh, become advantage, somebody else is disadvantaged. And you know what's really sad about it for me? Is that some of the most powerful people in the country are the ones who are doing it. And I must say that we had a president, Donald Trump, who was a genius at it. And Ron DeSantis is triple genius at it. I don't know any 
teacher. Do you know a teacher? Anyone here? I'm a teacher. I don't know a single teacher who are trying to groom into children for later sex. Do you know of any? I don't. And by the way, that piece of power in New York City that Hillary Clinton supposedly had a grooming uh, network in, down in the basement, uh, that particular restaurant does not have a basement. So what we have is an outright lie. So my point is this, is that we are seeing, seeing the country being <clears throat> torn apart <clears throat> by people <clears throat> who are not telling the truth. And they're doing something even more than that. They're misconstruing the truth on purpose. And so that's what this is all about. And, it, and when did this begin? Oh, around uh, when, the, when the Tea Party was formed. When the Tea Party was formed, something very special happened. Truth and reason went out the window. Effect, personality became important. Truth went out the window. And reason and logic, they all went away. Now how can any normal person think for a second that that nice high school teacher you had who's being paid, what, 45000 a year, she goes home every night, takes care of her kids, and that she is grooming your children. And how does this happen? But what bothers me is that it's being passed off as sanity. Marjorie Taylor Greene, Marjorie Taylor Greene is making hay out of dishonesty. And here's a good one. You all heard it. Rick Scott, who should, who should be in prison, by the way. Rick Scott has the nerve to go on television and disavow ever saying that we should sunset Social Security and Medicare. They can show Rick Scott what he has written, what he has said. And he would sit there and still say, oh, I didn't say that. That's not what I meant. But Joe Biden, no, we're not talking about Joe Biden, my man. We're talking about your saying one thing and then realizing that it's going to cost you votes, it's going to cost you party votes. So what do you do? You lie. You are intellectually dishonest. And, and it works. Anytime you hear someone say this, we're going to own the libs. <coughs> Whenever you hear own the libs, you know what you're getting ready to face? Lies. Because the only way to own the lib is to tell a lie. Because you know that the multitude in the villages will believe it. And that's what you want to do. You own the lives. Now, what does that mean? You know, most people I know think it's a, a, a cute sounding uh, phrase, that's all it is. No, it really is an attack on truth. It's an attack on truth. And it seems to be okay with most people I run into now that it's okay. Jim Jordan. Jim Jordan would not answer any subpoena. But guess what Jim Jordan is doing now? He is issuing subpoenas. Now how can that be? That's dishonest, and we're falling for it, and guess where this man is? This man is one of the highest places in the country, and he is making laws for us and he is intellectually dishonest. And why we keep voting for these people? I don't know how many Republicans are in this room, but I can tell you something. Uh, uh, I'm amazed at the, the, the kind of people that we are electing, and I'm afraid for the state of Florida. When our courts become all Republican, have they gotten there yet, the Supreme Court? Are they in the Democrats in the Supreme Court of the state of Florida? I think I've lost track because it is, it's gone so quickly. But everything that we're doing right now, everything that uh, uh, Ron DeSantis is doing, 
he does something very smart first. He either gerrymanders the, the area, he appoints the judges, and they, then he can act. A judge said that what, what he did was illegal, but we don't have any apparatus to correct it. He should not have fired him. That's right. Shouldn't have fired him, but he did. And it's wrong. It's illegal. But there's no way to deal with it. Because the way he framed it, he framed an argument for it, which is intellectually dishonest. And we fall for it. So my question to you is that how long will uh, we continue to allow people to stand in our faces and tell us lies and we do nothing about it? How much longer? I gotta tell you this. Um, when my daughter was 12 years old, uh, a music group called Two Life Crew were very popular. I don't know if you recall Two Life Crew. Very, very foul, foul stuff, as far as I'm concerned. So I knew that my daughter was going to see it at some point. She was going to see that dancing. So I went and bought it, and I brought it home, and I sat down with her, and we watched it together on television. So I asked my daughter, I said, you know, what do you think of it? And she said, I don't know, it's ugly dancing. And that's all it was. And I'll bring that up to bring up banning books and music and everything else. Now, I don't know about you all, but how many of you all were harmed by a book you read? And we read some pretty gruesome stuff back in the day, remember? All this stuff that you can't read now. I read The Glorious Eye. My daughter read The Glorious Eye. I read Animal Farm as a child. I read Huckleberry Finn. And guess what? Huckleberry Finn is an anthem to the word nigger. It didn't destroy my life. When I was teaching at Northern Illinois University in the cab, Illinois, uh, my black students would not read Huckleberry Finn because of nigger. Well, I said, well, you better go to another class because that is the assignment. My boss asked me to give them another book to read. I refused to do it. Now, I wouldn't do that today. Today, I would give them an option. I was young and stupid. Uh, <laughs> just fresh out of the University of Chicago. Or I knew every damn thing. So you read this book or else. I wouldn't do that now. But I would try to teach those kids that you're going to see this book again. You're going to see these characters again. On some exam and in some conversation, you would need to know this. And you should read it. But right now, that book cannot be read in the state of Florida. That book cannot be read in many, many places. If we have people now who are not trained to do it, who are determining what books our kids can read, because they are telling lies about what the books will do. They are being intellectually dishonest. And I'm afraid that uh, if we let it keep going in the state of Florida, that Ron DeSantis will do more than we, than we know. The college, the college board, he had influence on the college board AP classes have been watered down. We have removed race, but much of it. Not to mention gay people, forget that. And I gotta tell you something. I don't know any, any attracting gay people. I don't know about you, I just don't know any. I know some who are very smart. I know some who start businesses. I know some who play piano wonderfully. I don't know any threatening gay people. You know what? Ron DeSantis doesn't either. It's all made up bullshit. Because it works. Because it works.
I have a long list here. <laughs> but what we're doing is we're allowing reason to go out the window. And how many of you all ever stop people and say, do me a favor, uh, why don't you uh, tell me, count for me, and show me the number of times you have heard of or seen a teacher groom a kid. Just show me. Show me. And you won't get an answer. You get, you get a deflection, but you will not get any evidence. Because there isn't any. Oh, there could be somebody somewhere out in uh, the villages. I mean, uh, as much as I know about the villages, could be somewhere there. But there's no one normal, you know, who is guilty of this. And so, if you're going to ask me any questions, I want to, I want to tell you, ask you to, to ask one that you sincerely want to have me talk about. All right? And I just, as a, as a black person, I am uh, totally devastated by the, the lies being told right now. Um, uh, I heard something last night that I did not know. I did not know that the evaluation of, of houses is so out of line racially that a black house is valued for the same house, far below that of a white person. A study was done, a trick was pulled. A couple changed their race to white. The value of that house went up dramatically. Ron DeSantis does not want your kids to know that. He does not want you to know that racism exists still. And so as I said, when I agreed to come here, it is wrecking intellectual dishonesty, it is wrecking our country, it is destroying institutions that we thought were inviolate. I did. I tell my wife, I tell my wife all the time, what makes us great in this country is the rule of law. I would never again tell any person from another country that rule of law is what makes us different. I would never do it again. But guess what I know now? The rule of law has gone to the wind. And I'm not exaggerating. We had a president who cared nothing for it. And now we have, thank goodness, a doddering old man as president. <laughs> Who cares about it? Thank goodness. We got a question. All right.